This might be one of the most elaborate supply chain attacks we've seen. Until now. Die Hacks der Woche mit Martin Haunschmidt. Hello. This installment of Hacks of the Week is going to be in English. So if you want to keep things in German, I can refer you to my text newsletter. This is going to be in German. You can find it on LinkedIn. Yeah, so this is new. I realize that a lot of teams I work with have English as their business language. But let's jump into the story of the week. XC, a library which found itself in the midst of a huge and very elaborate supply chain attack. The package XC utils is in the dependency tree of a lot of software. And in there are many major OSs. For example, Debian, Fedora, Red Hat, Uh, and macOS. The package itself is used in the compression and decompression of data. So you might have heard about this story already. There is a lot to unpack here. See what I did there? Unpack. It's a very normal day for Andreas Freund, who is an engineer at Microsoft and he is benchmarking some system, what an engineer does. He finds out that The, his SSH daemon, the SSHD process, takes up a lot of CPU resources and he decides to investigate. Drilling down, he finds that libLCMA seems to be the problem and in there he finds a backdoor. Someone added malicious code to the package. He raises alarm in an email list and thus kicking off the thriller we are now investigating. And not a second too soon. This library, for example, is used in some implementations of SSH. SSH was something you could expose to the internet without any problems. But in this case, if the actors behind this backdoor would have managed for the library to be in production environments, this would have led to a lot of chaos. Especially as it turns out, as this backdoor could be used to execute code on any vulnerable system. SolarWinds would have been a Lechelschas, as we say in Austria, against this. But how can something like this happen? Two words, underpaid and overworked. Two words that describe basically a lot of maintainers of open source libraries and tools. And this is again an occasion where this XKCD comic turns out to be true. There is one guy thanklessly maintaining a library which is used in a lot of projects. The maintainer in this case is Lasse Collins and he even mentioned mental health problems and not being able to move the needle in, in development for these projects anymore. But luckily there is one person who decides to help him. Gia Tan. Gia created his GitHub account in 2021 and created a patch for the library. And he sent it to an email list and immediately some users tried to put pressure on the maintainer of the library, on Lasse, to incorporate this patch into the code base. And as it turns out, many of these accounts don't have any real public trace besides this one email. So yeah, pressure mounts on the maintainer of XC utils. And in the beginning of 2023, Gia 10, the first time, uh, merges code directly into the library. So in January of 2023, he basically became the maintainer of the package. So now he could finally add his backdoor. Basically, yes, there were a few steps in between, uh, which I'm not going to go into detail right now. You can read up on them in the sources below. But yeah, now there's a backdoor in the library. But still, there is another step left. Because if there's a backdoor in the library no one uses, Is there a backdoor in there? Yeah, it is. But for the backdoor to make any sense for the actor behind this, this library or this specific malicious version needs to be incorporated into big open source projects. For example, Linux distributions. And there, the actors behind this attack chose a similar pathway than the one they used to become maintainer of the project. They used simple social engineering. They wrote to the maintainers of different projects to include the newest version with great new features of this library called XCUtils. And this was rather successful. This library found its way into a lot of non-stable, this is important, 
Linux projects. And here we are back at the start again. Andreas Freund sees a performance issue, decides to investigate and finds the backdoor. If it wasn't for this simple lucky fact, the backdoor would have found its way into the stable releases of, for example, Fedora, Debian, Red Hat and Kali. So conclusion, some thoughts. In my opinion, this was a state actor. You don't have the resources to build up uh, trust over the, a span of two years to implement a backdoor in a library. How they exploited the life situation of an OSS maintainer and also the technical ta tradecraft. <laughs> yeah, there's not that many people who can pull this off over this time span, especially. Secondly, the situation with regards to open source is not that good. It's not optimal. The house of cards we've built and we've called IT is based on the unpaid labor of many, many people who do this in their free time and whose life situations change. And then you have this uh, huge project which you maintain, you are responsible for, but on the other hand, you don't have the energy to do this. And also you don't get paid for this. And thirdly, the supply chain. The probability is not zero that for every GIA 10 we find, there's 10 we don't find. And yeah, while in uh, this particular case you could say, okay, the only thing we or most of us need to do is have an up-to-date asset inventory and know which versions are vulnerable and do the updates or do a downgrade in this case even. But when looking at the bigger picture, every company or organization that produces software needs to have a way to find out quickly if they are victims of such an attack. Or if a project which was a victim to this attack is somewhere in the dependency tree of their own project, their own infrastructure. Yeah, in this case, we were probably lucky. There won't be that many unstable <laughs> OSSs in the wild used as a server. But yeah, if you think about the software ecosystem as a whole, for example, the NPM package manager or whatever you're using. This is something that happens and the faster we are able to say we don't use this library in this particular malicious version, the easier it becomes for us. The term for this is software bill of materials and I think we'll hear this term a little bit more often in the future. And also some information for you if you maintain an open source project I am working with the NetID. Their newest call for projects is online and under certain circumstances, they do pay for de the development and further development of open source projects. So if you're interested and this might apply to you, go there, netid.at and have a look for yourself. So that's it for today. Please let me know if English works for you or if it doesn't. And also if you have English speaking colleagues, I'd be happy if you forward this video to them as well. Thanks and until next week.